uh, Luke 19, and we're going to start at the at the very first verse of the 19th chapter of Luke. And if you find your place, if you stand to your feet for just a brief minute. And the Bible says, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans and, the rich, and was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was of little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. Father, we thank you, Lord, for many blessings. Thank you for your word, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will use this word now to lead us and to guide us. To see what we haven't seen. To hear what we haven't heard. And Father, we pray that this will bring us closer to you where we may bring you praise, honor, and glory. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Most people want to think about Zacchaeus as, as kind of a child's tale. Do you remember that, that, that little song that you used to sing when you were young about Zacchaeus being a little short man and stuff and, and how, you know, that uh, uh, we, we think about, well, maybe he was no taller than some of the kids that, that come to, to uh church but but there's a whole lot more to this story than just somebody that uh, um, uh, is going to come to to know the Lord because if if we look at it and we try and get inside of this head and begin to understand them then we're going to see that that there's a whole lot more to Zacchaeus than what we thought Jesus was on his way up to Jerusalem he was passing through Jericho he got to the outsides of Jericho and be like uh, coming into Blairsville from Young Harris, and about the time he got to, to the McDonald's or something, he was on his way heading out of the, of the city. And uh, he said he had this encounter there. Uh, and behold, he said there was a man named Zacchaeus. Now, what do we know about Zacchaeus? Well, it says, uh, which was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Uh, we think about chief among the publicans, and we think about a publican, and a publican was very simply a tax collector. He was somebody, and they could have been in a whole bunch of different places, but we know that Matthew, who was also a publican, who was a tax collector, was sitting on the side of the road, and he was taking receipts of people that were coming into the city. And so if you were bringing something into the city and were going to sell it, the old Romans being very, very money-minded and, and wanting to make sure they got all the taxes that they could, they would tax on what you bought into the city before you even sold it. We think about taxes today as being what? Being a sales tax or something like that. But they didn't wait for it to be sold. If you had it and you were going to bring it into the city, they were going to tax it. They were going to get their share out of it out front. If it was bad, if they couldn't sell it, you sure didn't want to bring it home because if you bought it back the next day into the city again, guess what they were going to do? They were going to tax it again. The same stuff. So it was just a, an ongoing thing. Now we think about Matthew as being a publican and, and we're taking those taxes and Jesus coming up and just looking at him and saying, follow me. And if you, you, you read about uh, Matthew, he said he just got up immediately and he followed Jesus. Well, now we, we see about this man, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus and, and it says he was chief among the publicans. So what does it mean to be chief among the publicans? Well, he might have been the one that actually assigned Matthew to where he was supposed to collect those taxes. He was 
above all, he had people working under him. And so he was able to uh, uh, draw in income from a whole bunch of different places. He was just, just coming in. Hence, the next statement was, and he was rich. He not only took part of what he collected, but he took part of what everybody that was under him collected. And so you think he was rich. How many of us think to ourselves, boy, if I just had a little more money, if I just had a little, a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that, then I could be, I could be happy. I could, I could see something. I could, I could you know, be, be able to, to just relax a little bit. Jesus told a parable about what? A rich man who said, you know, uh, what am I going to do? I don't even have room to store everything that I got. I'm going to tear down my barns and build bigger barns. And uh, it just seems like it's a never-ending struggle. The more we have, the more we want. And that was the problem with, with Zacchaeus. Uh, but he had achieved his goal. And a lot of us who, who maybe don't have just a, a, a perfect sense of security, they would look at Zucchaeus and say, well, what, what's he doing? He's got everything he could possibly ever need or want. But he was saying, there's something lacking. There's something not here. There's something missing in my life. And he said that uh, he sought to see Jesus who he was. Uh, he sought to see Jesus. How do you think he found out about Jesus? Now we know that surely the, the uh, rumors of, of all and the accounts of all the miracles that Jesus was doing because this was kind of late in Jesus' ministry. This happened. He was on his way to Jerusalem for that very last time. He was soon to be crucified. He was soon to be laid in a tomb. And so this was late in his mid Jesus' ministry. He was on his way to J Jerusalem. And uh, Zacchaeus says, I've, I've heard about this man. I've, I've heard about him making the, the lame to walk. I've heard about him curing the lepers. I've even heard about him raising the dead. What kind of man is this? Is, is there something that we could look at and see something in this man that, that made him different from any other man? Well, the Old Testament tells us that when we shall see him, there's not going to be anything that's going to be comely about him. He's not going to have the appearance of somebody that we're just going to be drawn to and can't, he's, can't you know, stay away from him. He's not going to have the, the rock star persona. He's, he's not going to have the the entourage uh, that, that are going to be proclaiming his name before him and everything, although he did have that when he entered Jerusalem, didn't he? They were saying, Hosanna, glory to his he. They were praising him for coming in the name of the Lord, and yet that hadn't happened yet. And here was Zacchaeus, this, this one man, that was saying, I want to see. When. Maybe Matthew told him about Matthew, when he first started following Jesus, what did he do? He, he had a feast. And who was at that feast but his other publicans? Remember the Pharisees? They all criticized Jesus because they said, what? He, went to, he goes to eat with publicans, with sinners. Maybe Matthew said, hey, here's, here's somebody you need to meet. Here's somebody you need to talk to. Maybe he heard about it from Matthew. Maybe it was just the accounts that was reaching him. But whatever it was, it made Zacchaeus say, I just want to get a glimpse of this man. I just want to want to see this man. I've often wondered, uh, uh, what makes people come to church? What makes us want to want to be here and, and worship the Lord? Uh, I was saying that, you know, kind of missed the singing a little bit this morning. We, we, we didn't get to do it and, and, you know, kind of missed that because I love singing the praises. I, I know I'm not a good singer, but I thank you all for letting me get up there with, with you anyhow. And, and, you know, it's important to me that 
that, that we do that, 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 that we sing his praises, that we, we tell him how much we love him. Surely we can do that without song, but I don't know. Sometimes them songs just, just strike a note, just, just get something stirred up deep inside that makes you want to want to do something. And so I, I, I just love it. But what makes a person want to come to church? Surely, if, if we know the Lord, there's, there's kind of a fire that's burning inside of us that's saying, hey, I need, to, I need to thank him. I realize what he's done for me. I, not what he has done for me, but what he is doing for me because his mercies are new every day. And, and he's always working something in our lives. We, we, we think that we've, we've got the problems and, and surely life is not, not just smooth sailing all the time, but, but Jesus said in this world, you will suffer tribulations, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And we put our faith in that one person who has overcome the world, who has done all things and knows all. And so we put our faith in him. But I also like to think because we, we know that there's, that there's people that don't know the Lord and, and they, they come to church. And, and they'll be the first ones to tell you, well, you know, you talked about being born again last week. And, and they'll be first, you know, I, I haven't been born yet. I, I haven't done that yet. Uh, and I'm still looking to see if all this is true, if all this is, is you know, coming to, 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 to me, if, if what I'm hearing is, is working things out in my mind, if, is this true? And we know that those people come to church, but what makes them come to church? Maybe a curiosity, just like Zacchaeus might have had a curiosity. What does this man look like that performs these miracles? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm a miracle. And, and, and there ain't, ain't nothing going on in town that says, hey, you know, this, this guy's doing great things out there, and so we all need to come and hear him. And, and I don't do that, but, a, but a, a, a statement that Jesus made in the sixth chapter of John when he was talking about, about people coming to him, and he said, no man, no man can come unto me unless the Father draw him. Do you believe that God works in the world today? Do you think that he knows what he is doing and works in this world today? I understand that he is, is, is working and that he is working in the lives of believers and he's also working in the lives of unbelievers. People that don't know him. People that have not been born again. People that have this curiosity. And maybe it's it's like the people that were telling those rumors, those, those accounts, those stories to Zacchaeus, and he was saying, well, I, I want to see what this man looks like. Maybe it's, it's us as, as believers who, who tell somebody, hey, you know, um, my life was on a downhill spiral, or, or I just felt so, so lost and alone, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, Jesus came into my life, and I started seeing the truth. It's in him. And that truth, that, that belief changed my life. And now it seems like, although I still got all the problems, I, I still have the difficulties that I had before, but everything seems always like it falls in place. And it, it, it seems like it, I, I can sleep good at night. And when I give things over to him, he takes care of them. And I don't have to, you know, Jesus is going to worry about them or if he's going to stay up then. Ain't no sense in me staying up. I can get a good night's sleep knowing that he's, he's got it and he's going to take care of it. Maybe it was something like that, but there was something missing at, in Zacchaeus' life. The authority that he had over other people, the money that he had. I'm sure he lived what we would call high society, high society among the publicans, if you he was looking to, to do with the, with the common people. They probably didn't want nothing to do with them. None of us probably hang out with people from the IRS, do we? We just, just kind of think that that's going to be pushing it too far. And so here's the kids. And he's saying, I want to see him. I, I want to see what he is. He said he was a small statue. He was a short man. 
He wasn't real tall. He couldn't help anything about that. But he had a desire to see Jesus. And so when he couldn't see, when they were passing, it says that what? He ran on ahead. So he, he ran on ahead. The crowds probably were lying on both sides of the road. There was no way to get ahead of the crowds. But he ran on ahead. And this was something that a person of his stature probably wasn't supposed to do to start with. Wasn't supposed to run. If he was wearing, you know, like a robe, remember the, the father of the prodigal son? You know, it says he lifted up his robe and he ran out to meet his son. Well, that's Zacchaeus probably picked up the, the hem of his garment and started running out to meet, get ahead to where he could meet and see this Jesus who he was. Couldn't see an end to the, to the crowds. But there was one thing. It was a sycamore tree. And so he started to get up into this sycamore tree. He just wanted to see Jesus. Remember that. He just wanted to see him. Who is this man? I just want to see him. So he lowers himself by running. I don't care what the people are going to say about me. I don't, I don't, that, that's not going to matter. I want to see this man. And so he runs, and then he starts climbing the tree. Do you ever see somebody do something, and you say, well, what's he doing there? You know, he's being kind of foolish doing that, too. We don't know how old he was or anything like that. Sometimes older people, we, we do things that we shouldn't do. You know, we, we climb ladders and do things that, that we'd be better off not doing. But we still do them. We, we have a, a thing. When something moves us, we, we want to be young again, I guess. And we want to be able to do the things we did. And here was, was Zacchaeus. And what was his whole motive? I just want to see Jesus. Curiosity or being led by the Lord? I want to think it's the latter. He was being led by the Lord. The Bible tells us there's none that seek God, no, not one. But we know that God is seeking us. As Jesus comes past, what does he do? Looks to the side, maybe looks up. Here's this man in this tree looking down at him. Imagine eye contact. Imagine, I just want to see Jesus. I'm going to get up in this tree and I'm going to, I'm going to look. And then having Jesus come by and look right at you. Have you ever had that kind of eye contact? That kind of eye contact with Jesus? Have you ever had him just stop because they were heading out. They're heading to Jerusalem, remember? And, and they're heading out, and all of a sudden, he just stops. And he looks up in this tree. Imagine what old Zacchaeus is thinking. I just want to see him. That's all I want him to do. I don't know about any of this other stuff. I just want to see him. Jesus stops, and he looks up. And I think Zacchaeus is looking directly at him. And I think Jesus is looking directly at Zacchaeus. And he says, Zacchaeus, he knows my name. How did he know my name? Has people been talking about me? How did, how did he know my name? Yeah, he knows our name. Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down. I got to spend this afternoon at your house. You're coming home with me? I just wanted to, just wanted to see him, just to see what he looked like, to see what this miracle worker is. He's coming home with me. He made haste and he came down. They went to Zacchaeus' house. I don't know how far it was off the way. It doesn't matter. Because Jesus will go wherever he has to to meet us. Although most of us are not seeking Jesus, 
He is seeking us. He knows our name. He knows our heart. He knows our troubles. He knows everything about us. And if you've ever had Jesus look you right in the eyes, then you know what I'm talking about right now. You know what it's like to be like the only person that this message is for. The only thing that matters is what Jesus is speaking to me right now. They went to Zacchaeus' house and Zacchaeus received him. I don't know how long Jesus stayed there. I don't know how long it, it took. But I want you to look at what happened when he came out. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, saw Zacchaeus, make haste, come down. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. I just wanted to see him, but this is, this is going to be better than I ever thought. He's coming home with me. And he made haste. And when they saw it, they murmured saying he has gone to be the guest of a man that was a sinner. Hmm. Did you ever hear people talk? I wonder why, why he's here. Surely the Lord can't save him. Surely he's gone too, too long. He's, he's, he's gone too long. He's, he's never going to be able to change. Don't let anybody ever, ever tell you you can't. What did Jesus tell us? With God, all things are possible. All things, even the salvation of an old sinner. It says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Now we don't know what happened between the time that they were criticizing him and the time when Zacchaeus stood. We don't know what Jesus said to him. Boy, if I knew what it was, I'd bottle it. I'd be giving it out on the street corners. I'd be, be doing whatever it was. But it says here, Zacchaeus stood and said unto him, Behold, Lord, the half of all my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. You can't have a meeting with Jesus and hear the truth from his mouth and come away unaffected. When salvation comes, a change is going to come. You're not going to be the same person that you were before. You're not going to think the same things that you were before. You're not going to do the same things that you did before. You're going to be changed. This chief publican who would send out these people, he said, I've become very rich over this. And he said, half my goods I'm going to give to the poor. And if I've taken anything falsely, if I've charged too much in taxes, I'm going to restore these people fourfold. That was the most in the Old Testament that any Jew ever had to, to restore was fourfold. Give them back four times what they, what they normally, what they had, had swindled. And, and so Zacchaeus is saying, I'm going to do this. Do you think he might have been saying to himself, I've got to restore fourfold. And uh, if, if I do that... Uh, I won't have anything else to live on. How, I, I've already given half my stuff away. I'm going to give that to the poor. And now I'm going to restore everybody that, I've, that I took. I'm going to restore them fourfold. How am I ever going to be able to do that? I'm going to run out of money, not have anything to live on, go hungry, and I'll have to throw myself at the, the mercy of other people. He didn't think about any of that. The only thing he thought about doing was pleasing Jesus. Now, don't get this wrong. Let's, let's read what, what Jesus said to them. And Jesus said unto them, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. 
For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus thought he was looking to find Jesus, but Jesus was coming to save him. And when he saved Zacchaeus, there was a change in Zacchaeus' life. Zacchaeus was not doing these things to get salvation. He was doing these things because he was now saved. I don't know what Jesus said to him. But I know the Lord led him to Jesus. I know that Jesus talked to him. And I know that Zacchaeus' life was changed. Someday I'm going to see him. Maybe I'll ask him. Maybe it won't matter. But maybe when I get to heaven and, and I'm just walking around admiring everything, there's going to be a man kind of walking toward me and I'm going to see him. And the Bible says that we'll, we're going to know as we're known. And this is going to be Zacchaeus. And I'm going to say, can I ask you something? He says, yeah, anything. Jesus say to you over lunch? What did Jesus say that changed your heart so much? Now, has your heart been changed? Maybe you came here today and, and you wanted to hear the singing. And you wanted to hear something that was going to lift you up and encourage you. We need a lot of encouragement out there, don't we? It's a hard world right now. But maybe you heard something that, that's telling you what you do need. It's not more money. It's not just looking. But it's Jesus. And Jesus said, if any man comes to me, I will in no wise turn him away. While they get a song of invitation, right? <laughs>